There's a war happening right now, not in trenches or skies, but inside the chips that power your phone. A war that will decide who controls the future, the United States or China, and it's already reshaping the world's balance of power. The outcome will decide who leads the 21st century, the code or the crown. In your pocket, on your desk, and in the car you drive, a tiny, invisible war is being fought. It's a war over microscopic slices of silicon that will define the future of global power. The rise of AI is set to send this industry skyrocketing to a value of over 1 trillion by 2030, and as the market expands, so too does the battle for global control. The world's two superpowers, the US and China, are locked in a high-stakes battle for control over these computer chips, and the outcome will ripple through everything from the price of your next phone to the balance of military power for the rest of the century. This isn't a conflict with soldiers and tanks. It's a war fought in sterile clean rooms, corporate boardrooms, and the halls of Washington and Beijing. It is a real-time geopolitical thriller where the weapons are export controls and the prize is technological supremacy. For decades, the US has dominated this world, but now China is fighting back with a vengeance. The question isn't if. China can build a world-class chip industry anymore, but how fast and what it means for the rest of us when it does. To really get what's at stake, we need to understand these tiny, all-powerful marvels of engineering. Semiconductors or microchips are the brains of modern life. Think of chips as the neurons of our civilization, invisible yet powering everything from smartphones to satellites. They're not just components. They are the very scaffolding of a new industrial revolution, a general-purpose technology whose significance rivals that of electricity or the combustion engine. They are the hidden enablers powering every critical sector, from artificial intelligence and cloud computing to advanced medical equipment and high-performance supercomputers. It's no exaggeration to say they are the foundation of the global economy and national security. For half a century, one country has been the undisputed king, the United States. From the invention of the integrated circuit in Silicon Valley to designing the most complex chips today, America has held the crown. This leadership wasn't just about economic pride. It was a pillar of its global power. One of the industry's founding fathers famously called semiconductors the new oil back in the 1970s. And that has never been more true. Designing the world's best chips meant the US military had the sharpest tech and the US economy had a massive competitive edge. But while the US designed the chips, it outsourced most of the actual making of them. The world built a breathtakingly complex and efficient global supply chain. Every chip is a global traveler. It might be designed in California, manufactured in Taiwan using Dutch machines, then shipped to Malaysia for assembly, before being installed in a phone put together in China. For decades, this system worked beautifully. It was a monument to globalization that made tech cheaper and more powerful every year. Then two things happened. First, the pandemic showed just how fragile this intricate global dance really was. A single factory shutdown triggered a cascade of shortages, grinding multi-billion dollar industries like automaking to a halt. The world suddenly woke up to the fact there were these things called chips and that if the supply chain stopped, we would be starved overnight. Second, China made its ambitions crystal clear. With its Made in China 2025 master plan, Beijing announced its goal to become a self-sufficient, high-tech powerhouse. At the heart of that plan was one audacious goal, break its dependence on foreign chips and build its own industry from scratch. The Chinese government started pouring hundreds of billions of dollars into this effort. This wasn't just an economic plan. It was a declaration of technological independence and to Washington, it was a direct challenge. The stage for the chip war was set. To see how the US is trying to halt China's rise, you have to understand the critical choke points in the semiconductor ecosystem. This landscape isn't defined by a single dominant player, but by a complex multipolar distribution of power and specialization. The US, Europe, Korea, Taiwan, China and Japan control about 92% of the global industry. The US alone holds about 52% of the global share, while China holds roughly 5%.
These are the levers of power, and they are the keys to this entire conflict. Each choke point is a valve on the world's digital bloodstream, and Washington still holds most of the taps. The first choke point is chip design and intellectual property. The most sophisticated chips, especially the processors that power AI and supercomputers, are still overwhelmingly designed by American firms like NVIDIA, AMD and Qualcomm. Their intellectual property is a wall built on decades of knowledge, and it's incredibly hard to climb. But China is catching up. Companies like Huawei's HiSilicon are now designing their own competitive advanced chips. The second and most critical choke point is manufacturing equipment. You can't build an advanced chip factory without specialized, mind-bendingly complex machines. The most important of these is made by just one company in the world, ASML, in the Netherlands. ASML makes the only extreme ultraviolet, or EUV, lithography machines that can print the impossibly small patterns needed for the world's most advanced chips. Standard EUV tools run 200 meters. High NA EUV systems are 350, 370 meters each. Without these machines, you're locked out of the cutting edge. The third choke point is fabrication, the actual manufacturing. And here the world is dangerously reliant on one company in one of the most sensitive places on Earth, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC. TSMC is the undisputed leader in advanced logic chip manufacturing, accounting for more than half of the global foundry market. It manufactures chips for companies like Apple and Nvidia, making Taiwan the epicenter of the tech world. A single chip might travel across five countries before it even reaches a device. It's globalization printed on silicon. For years, China was a massive customer in this system. But as China's own tech giants grew, and the line between commercial and military tech blurred, Washington started to see this not as a partnership, but as a huge vulnerability. That fear led them to unleash their most powerful weapon. On October 7, 2022, Washington unveiled sweeping export controls blocking advanced AI chips, e.g. A100, H100 classes, and restricting China ES access to leading-edge tools. This was the real start of the chip war. In one move, Washington pulled the plug on China's future. Or at least that was the plan. The rules were complicated, but the goal was simple. Freeze China's chip industry in time. The main target was any chip useful for advanced AI and supercomputing. Exports of top-tier chips like NVIDIA's A100 and H100 were banned, but the controls went much deeper. The US pressured the Dutch government to stop ASML from selling its cutting-edge EUV machines to China. Then it got Japan, a key supplier of other specialized materials and tools, to join the restrictions. The impact on Chinese AI firms was immediate. For China's AI startups, it was like waking up to find the future suddenly unplugged. To go along with this attack, the US launched a massive defensive plan. Congress approved 52.7b in incentives and R&D under the Chips and Science Act. The goal is ambitious. For the United States to produce roughly 20% of the world's most advanced chips by 2030, a huge leap from practically zero in 2022. But this flood of government money comes with a risk. The industry has always been cyclical, and heavy government investment could lead to structural overcapacity, where the market is flooded with chips nobody needs crushing prices and hurting even healthy companies. The strategy was clear. Choke off China's access to the cutting edge while rebuilding America, its own industrial power. For a little while, it looked like it was working. But China wasn't just going to roll over. The sanctions didn't kill China's ambition. They supercharged it. Facing a technological blockade, Beijing didn't back down. It pivoted. The export controls, which were meant to be a knockout blow, instead acted as a massive catalyst for China's push for total self-sufficiency. It has an industrial judo move, using the weight of America as sanctions to propel its own momentum. This was no longer just an industrial policy, it became a national crusade. The first part of the counter-strategy was to innovate with what they already had. Blocked from getting EUV machines, Chinese engineers at companies like SMIC got creative, they pushed their existing deep ultraviolet or DUV equipment to its absolute limit, figuring out complex ways to produce 7 nanometer chips. 
By 2023-2025, teardown analyses showed SMIC's 7 NMS in Huawei Silicon, with further domestic accelerator efforts reported in 2024-2025. While less efficient, it proved a crucial point. China could innovate around the restrictions, but the truly brilliant part of China's strategy is focused somewhere else. While the US obsessed over cutting-edge chips, China began a methodical campaign to dominate legacy chips. These are the older, less advanced semiconductors, 28 nanometers or larger, that the world actually runs on. They're the workhorse chips inside your car, your microwave, and a huge range of industrial and military equipment. While the West focused on the next generation of AI, China poured tens of billions into building massive factories for these older chips, reportedly accounting for nearly half of all new semiconductor facility construction in the world. Analysts flag overbuild, underutilization risk at 28 nanometer as China adds capacity. If the US built the future, China decided to own the present. The strategy appears to be to create a deliberate global oversupply. By flooding the market with cheap, state-subsidized semiconductors, China could drive foreign competitors out of business. This masterfully flips the script. The US might control the choke points for the technology of tomorrow, but China is positioning itself to control the technology that runs the world today. In a future crisis, Beijing could halt exports of a specific $5 chip that every car factory in America needs, grinding assembly lines to a halt. Beyond the hardware, the true enduring race is for human and talent capital. Much of the public discourse focuses on machines and factories, but the talent behind the technology is the most enduring source of innovation. The battle for people is the next critical frontier. The United States semiconductor industry was built on global talent. More than half of the CEOs of the top 25 US semiconductor companies were born outside the United States, and about half of the workforce is foreign-born. In 2023 alone, over 30% of US chip patents listed at least one Chinese-born researcher. The lines of nationality and innovation are blurring. This ability to attract the world's best and brightest has been a core pillar of its dominance. China is now directly competing on this front. Recognizing its own gaps in specialized fields, China's newly announced K-Visa targets foreign STEM talent. It's a calculated move in the global human capital competition. While Chinese companies are still in the early stages of building globally diverse teams, the message is clear. The competition is no longer just for silicon, but for the scientists, engineers and innovators who create it. Because in the end, the most powerful chip isn't made of silicon, it's the human brain. So where does that leave us? The world is not on the brink of a total chip crisis, but rather in a state of purposeful global recalibration. The old system, dictated purely by cost, is being tempered by the new logic of strategic security. The US has successfully slowed China's progress at the absolute cutting edge. Without EUV access, most analysts believe a 5-10 to ten year gap remains for China in key areas. However, the strategy has also created a more determined rival. The US controls the present of high-end manufacturing, but China is rapidly building a dominant position in the legacy chips that the global economy depends on. This is leading to a fracturing of the tech world into two blocks, one centered around the US and its allies, and another around China. This bifurcation will likely make technology more expensive and create huge uncertainty. This highlights a central dilemma for the West. How do you balance national security with the economic reality that your own firms rely on the massive Chinese market to fund their next generation of R&D. Companies are now walking a tightrope, selling modified less powerful chips to China just to keep revenues flowing. This is a stalemate of strategic dependencies. The US can deny China the tools for the future, but China is developing the leverage to shut down the present. The next great power won just control oil or gold, it will control the electrons flowing through silicon. Empires of the past were forged on steel and steam, the next will be etched in light. 